Good afternoon, welcome. So I'm Peter Coppens, responsible at Colt for the product management team on the networking side. For those who have uh, listened uh, this morning to our VP of uh, engineering, Mirko, who gave a keynote speech, you will have heard that we have some news to, to share today. We are launching a new service. Um, since this is the business forum of, uh, of this Congress, uh, I thought it's good also to relate a bit the cost side. So what is SDN, SDN1 doing in terms of making high bandwidth a lot more affordable to the end user, the enterprise that's using it? So maybe quickly, yep. So maybe quickly, one slide on, uh, on Colt, so you know how it relates to what we do on, uh, on SDN, SD1. So we are a networking voice and data center service provider. We're only focusing on uh, business customer, no residential, no Soho. Just to give some illustrations, a vast majority of the top finance and top media customers in Europe are using Colt for their networking uh, needs. And on top of that, tens of thousands of mid-size enterprises. So how do we differentiate from the 50 plus other carriers that are walking around this, this conference? Colt is really focused on fiber assets on a pan-European and also Asian basis now. So what does that mean? Uh, we constructed uh, over 49 metropolitan area networks across the globe. So we own fully the network. For example, here in The Hague, in the business centers, there's fiber running around. Amsterdam, Rotterdam, but also internationally, uh, going to London, Paris, Frankfurt, Milan, Lisbon, Tokyo, Singapore, etc. So 49 in total of the key cities are covered. In those metropolitan area networks, we then connect the enterprise buildings directly with the cold fiber. Over 24,000 uh, on a global basis that are directly connected. It's not just uh, enterprise buildings, it's also data centers. So up to now we have more than 650 directly connected. As far as we know, that's more than anyone else on, in that same geography. Uh, going from the big ones like Interaction, Equinix, to the smaller, more specialized ones. The question is, of course, does this matter, uh, owning the fiber assets? We think it does. It gives you complete independence in terms of the cost base in terms of the del delivery timeframes, in terms of the quality, the innovation you want to do. On the wide area networking, there's nothing shocking, nothing new on this slide. We all know if you have several sites, you need to interconnect them. Uh, in Europe, the vast majority of customers want to outtask their network to a service provider. The network is critical to them, but it's not something that differentiates for their business. So they are fine to outtask. And obviously for the past decade, MPLS was the key de facto standard to do this. We have thousands of customers using MPLS in networking. If you talk to them, they, there's a lot that they like about MPLS. It's not uh, all bad. Uh, there's a lot that they like. It's um, obviously it's, uh, it's very mature technology. It's universally available more or less, and it's, uh, it has also very good quality of service support. So there's quite a lot of good things. Two things, if you look at the pains of the customers, there are two things that are standing out uh, always. One thing is about the cost of the complete solution. So if you put the wide area network in comparison to other uh, elements of the IT uh, estate, it's really one of the most costly ones. This is an, uh, an analysis over 100 enterprise customers. It might differ a bit by individual, but in general, it's quite costly. It's not just in absolute terms costly. It's also, obviously, we see the bandwidth demand increasing. There's more and more traffic demand that our customers have. At the same time, their wide area network, again in general, is not increasing at the same pace. So there's clearly a kind of disconnect there. There's a need. There isn't the budget to fill the need. So the cost is one customer pain. The second one is on the agility. Again, we all know this. Um, adding a new branch site these days or in the old days was taking 
weeks, which is not accepted anymore. Upgrading bandwidth, also taking days at the best, yeah. weeks at the worst case, this should be instantaneous. And in, in general, the whole change model is way too, uh, way too heavy, it's not portal driven, it's way too offline. So let's look at what, uh, what, we, what kind of solutions we can bring to overcome these kind of challenges. Here we have to really distinguish. There's a big distinction between being in the city center, in the key business areas like you have at top, and being somewhere outside in terms of your business site. If you are in a business center, a key business area in the city center, there's probably tons of fiber providers you can buy from. There's a lot of innovation. High bandwidth can be really cheap. If you're in the bottom case, it can be that you're at the mercy of one <coughs> provider. Uh, you can get 10 meg for the price that the guy at the top can get 100 meg or 1 gig these days. That, that's the reality. So the divide has always been there. It's only growing. So the, the answer at Colt, what we do on SDN and SD1, also differs in terms of where you are located. If you're located in the key business areas, I will talk about our cold on-demand portfolio, which is live, which you can, can, can have uh, as a service. If you're located somewhere outside, I will talk about the, our SD1, software-defined wide area networking, which is new and we're happy to launch uh, today. Starting with the on-demand portfolio, so here we have, as we said, we have a site in a key business area, a city center, whatever. We connect it with fiber directly back to our MPLS network or our core backbone, whatever it is. In the past, this was a lot of manual config, delivery taking weeks, and the, the cost curve versus the bandwidth going up was really steep. 10 times more bandwidth required a lot more budget as well. What we have now done, and this is a live capability, not a promise, not, it's, it's, it's a capability that we have today, it's our on-demand portfolio. The capability we give, and I'll show the portal in a minute, is that a customer goes in into a portal, he's connected to the cold network already, so the physical stuff is there, he goes in into a portal, he selects the A end, he selects the B end, if they are both on cold fiber, he, want, he says how much bandwidth he wants to have, he orders it and it's implemented in near real time, meaning in minutes, not in more days, weeks, etc. Near real time. Also, and I, that's the second part, the cost curve versus the bandwidth going up is getting a lot flatter now. There's still an increase from 10 meg to 100 meg to 1 gig, but it's a lot, a lot flatter. We, we'll see in a second. So, as we said, the portal, this is what customers get. They get in the portal, they sign in, they, they select their A and site. Let's take, for example, a site in London, a data center, Equinix. They connect their site, they connect the B end, whatever, Frankfurt, uh, Paris, we have shown here, they connect the B end. They define how much bandwidth they need, 100 meg, 200 meg, 1 gig, 10 meg, whatever. They order it, they sign digitally, and they get delivered the service instantaneous in a matter of minutes. This is live. This is not just for new connections. It can also uh, be used for existing connections. So you have an existing connection. You have 100 meg. You would like to upgrade to 200 meg. You go in, you click on the connection, you pull down the drop down, you say, I need 200 meg. You sign it digitally, you confirm that you're fine, it gets delivered instantaneously. This is what we have live now, as Mirko was also pointing at this morning, we are also expanding this, and this will be um, announced in the coming days. We are expanding this also towards the cloud, public cloud providers. So from your site, if you're on it, you want to have 100 meg, 200 meg, whatever, towards uh, a cloud provider like um, uh, Microsoft Azure, Azure, never sure how to pronounce. So Azure or Azure, if you want to have it, you can now order it instantaneously online and get it delivered 
within minutes. So that's something that we will still launch. The rest is available. If we look at the cost curve in terms of uh, how the cost goes up with bandwidth, on the right hand side we have again the ONET case where the customer is directly connected to our fiber. Thanks to the investment we have done in the network and the fact that, in, that we are now using the same CPE equipment at the customer site for all these bandwidths, there is hardly any increase anymore between 10 meg, 100 meg, 1 gig from a cost perspective. There is, but it's, it's very flat. However, if you look at the other case where we are with a site which is not connected in a, in a, in a business area but somewhere outside, in that case, we have looked in our own database. We are buying third-party lease lines from other providers. We have looked to the thousands and thousands that we buy. We have made the statistics. And in general, if you jump from a 10 meg to a 100 meg, costs go up by 66%. If you jump from a 100 meg to a 1 gig, costs jump by 76%. That's quite an increase that, in general, your wide area networking budget isn't following. So we, had, we have seen the on-demand the on part, which solves uh, the agility and the cost issues on the on-net side. If you now look at the off-net side, there we have our second capability, which we are launching today, which is the SD1, Software Defined Wide Area Networking. So let's say that we have a site located somewhere, a business site located not in a key business area, connected with a modest bandwidth, not because he not wants more, but, but because it's, uh, it's hard to get something affordable there, with a modest bandwidth connected to the MPLS cloud. So the first thing what we're doing, this is the, just uh, the basic SD1 capabilities. We are adding the capability to add in public internet access, which in a lot of cases is available at a, uh, at a much more uh, affordable price point. Previously, we did put at the customer side, we did put a CPE router, Cisco, Juniper, whatever. We have now gone away from that approach and we're doing something drastically new. We are putting a general purpose server, computer, x86 platform, which is running Ubuntu and is completely open. So we're going away from the proprietary implementation to a completely open system. On that system, on, the, on that x86 platform, we are then putting applications. Applications can be firewalling, routing, load balancing, application awareness, whatever. So here, the example that I'm giving here is, for example, to ensure that we can do an active-active load balancing between the MPLS part and the internet part. This can be based on lots of criteria. The customer can set those criteria himself in the portal that we provide. Again, this is implemented in real time. So he can decide what traffic goes where based on the criteria that he defines. Criteria could be application, all the TCP IP ports, of course. Could also be dynamic. We can say that some traffic can go the internet path unless certain network performance is not reached anymore. If the latency is too high, if there's too much packet drop, etc. The platform we are using here is uh, Versa. So we have chosen to go away from the incremental, step-by-step -step organic uh, implementation of uh, SD1, which we tried in the past, but which was not bringing the, the change that we wanted. So we're going here for a brand new concept, a greenfield implementation uh, based on open source uh, or completely open uh, CPE equipment and, uh, and a new vendor. In terms of the, of the portal, so this is just an example. I've, I've filled in here some, some, dummy, some dummy numbers so they don't make a lot of sense, but it gives a flavor of what a customer can do and can impact directly on the traffic flow. This is specific to this one example that we're taking out here for load balancing. Obviously for firewalling it will look differently, etc. So, it looks like I'm running ahead of time, which is good, because I'm already at my last slide here. Um, in terms, just to summarize, 
Uh, MPLS is good. It's there to stay for quite a long time still. It uh, has definitely a lot of, uh, of good elements. But two main key points, the, the cost of the whole solution, especially off-net if you're located outside business areas, and the agility. So the, the, the answers that we're bringing to that challenge are twofold. If you're located in these uh, key areas where there's a lot of, uh, of fiber available, we have our on-demand portfolio, which we launched earlier this year. It's available. Uh, so it's portal-based consumption. We have shown, you go in, you ask A and B and you select the bandwidth. It's delivered in real time. You can upgrade, downgrade as well. Um, and we have also seen that thanks to now having a much flatter curve of cost versus bandwidth, we jump two orders of magnitude. The cost isn't going up all that much. So this makes bandwidth in those areas really much more affordable. We have seen that the second case was where we are not, uh, where, where there's not a lot of competition, there's not a lot of fiber available. available. Uh, there we have our SD1 portfolio. Obviously, we can use a mixture of both. I'm just taking here the extreme cases to make the, to make the point. So there on SD1, we are using public internet access to make, um, to enable a lot more affordable bandwidth. We have shown the NFV capabilities that we are implementing on our open, uh, the open platform that we put at the, at the CPE, at the customer side. Um, we have shown here the example of the load balancing. There are other NFV applications like firewalling, uh, routing, etc., that are enabled. And the customer via the portal can in real time decide what traffic goes where. So, if, as I said today, and as uh, Mirko this morning, our VP of Engineering announced as well, so today we are launching our SD1 capabilities, the on-demand capabilities we have already for quite some time. If on any of these there's interest uh, for a proof of concept, we are offering uh, some free proof of concepts for uh, a limited set of, uh, of customers. So you can contact me, I'm around, uh, I'm around here, or you can email me at uh, firstname.lastname at call.net. So I see we have five minutes left over. Is it fine I take some questions, Frank? Please. Okay. And any questions? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm thinking about, for instance, on DHCP, uh, DHCP relay, OSPF, uh, with yeah. uh, traditional CPE. Uh, so what is the strategy with um, the SD-1? Will we will be able to continue uh, to do these services uh, on uh, the CPE as we were doing uh, up to now? Yeah, a, a good question, and the clear answer is yes. So we had two approaches. Before, we were trying to see if we could not get rid of the CPE altogether and have the CPE functionality delivered from the PE, from the, from the backbone. That works, but it has limitations in terms of functionality. It's what we're doing today. We do it for a lot of customers. It works very fine. There's not a, CPE, a physical CPE box anymore at the customer side because anyhow we deliver on, on Ethernet. Obviously, if you, if you need functionality that needs to happen at the customer side, like encryption or some, uh, some specific backup uh, mechanisms, then it breaks down. With the SD1 capability, we have this, um, this open uh, x86 platform standing there, and we deploy the different applications on that box, and the ones that you uh, mentioned, uh, the DHCP, OSPF, the different routing protocols, um, the, the IPsec uh, encryption, uh, backup mechanisms, they are available there. The only thing that will be difficult are things that require a non-standard, non-Ethernet interface, because these boxes obviously don't have them. Yeah, no, good, good question, and the, the short answer is yes, it's available. I've got maybe one more question. Is any? Mm, oh, yeah. I 
uh, several of the other presenters have talked about SDN and FE as uh, the value of it being from new services rather than displacing existing services. Um, is that very much the model here, that, that this use of uh, SD-WAN lets you um, service sales opportunities that otherwise you wouldn't have been able to, uh, to fulfill? Is that, the, is that the business goal here? Our, our goal is, uh, is twofold. Um, so on the SD-1 capability, uh, there we have, at the moment, we have quite an estate of customers that buy today MPLS-based VPNs. Big ones, small ones, no names, etc. They are doing that. Um, they are also moving, they are coming now to us, existing customers and new, they are coming to us and they start to ask for SD-1 enabled functionality. At the moment, I have to say that two years ago, this was nearly not existent, was really a small fraction. Today, from the RFPs that we get, both from existing and new customers, it's a sizable part. The sample that I have is not uh, representative, but I would say at least between one third and half of all the RFPs that I see are now asking for some form of SD-1 hybrid networking. There's a broad gamma there. So it's both, to answer your question, it's both current customers and new business. On the on demand, this is definitely a new market. This is where this is something that we know from the cloud, the public cloud, where you got in, you ask for uh, an instance to be delivered instantaneously. On networking, this is still early. So we see a lot of uh, interest. It's also the fact that a lot of the enterprises need to change internally the way that they work, their processes, the way things get ordered. Um, uh, their processes have to change as well. Maybe a last question. We have one minute more, yeah. Hi, Peter. Uh, on how many of your 24,000 locations is the bandwidth on demand available? And what's your standard UNI speed at all those locations? So it's the standard? UNI speed. Okay. Um, so in terms of the locations, we have enabled first the, high, the, 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 the key business sites. So that's the site we have most demand. So today, everything is pre-cabled. It's all there on a whole number of key business sites of the 650 that we, that we have connected. The step that we're doing now, and that's why we do this proof of concept, is that we have enabled it for any business site, any of these 24,000. The thing that we have to do is to see that a customer site is eligible, so you have to check it, and for the first the, for the first customer in the first building, we have to ensure that all the cabling is there, the, the data is correct in, our, um, in all our systems, because of, of course this is fully automated, so you have to rely much more on, uh, on, all, on the quality of the data. So that step needs to happen for the 24,000. So of these 24,000, there's a smaller subset where it all flows automatically. There's a subset where we need to do something maybe do some patching uh, in terms of cabling, maybe correct some of the data. So I can't give an exact number, but between now and the end of the year, the idea is to enable all of these 24,000 buildings. So it should not be a small uh, niche thing. We want to have this as the standard going forward, not immediately, but going forward, the standard way of delivering the service. That should be the vision. Uh. Okay, thank you. Thanks.